This is the story of how Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, was born. The story begins in a place called Nazareth. Nazareth was a quiet, sleepy little town where most people were farmers and shepherds. In this town, there lived a young Jewish woman named Mary. She was a very obedient and God-fearing woman. She helped her parents in the field and did her chores in the house. She was kind and helpful to everyone, and people liked her very much. Mary was going to get married soon to a good and honest man named Joseph. A few days before Mary's engagement, she had a visitor. He was a very special guest, an angel sent by God from heaven. The holy angel Gabriel visited her in her room and called her in her sleep. When Mary opened her eyes, she saw a heavenly figure bathed in a pool of white light floating beyond her window. It wore bright white robes and had big silver wings fluttering behind him. At first, she thought she was dreaming, but later when she heard the angel's voice, she realized this was no dream. Mary, do not be afraid. I am Gabriel. God has sent me to you. He loves you, and you have been chosen for something very special. Your kind heart and pure soul is of great value to the Lord. You are fortunate that God has chosen you above everyone else for this special task. I'm not afraid. I'm honored to know that God has chosen me to carry out His wish. I am lucky to be a favor to God. Bless you, Mary. God is pleased with you. I have come to tell you that soon you will have a son. He will be a great king one day, and he will be loved by everyone. He will be called the Son of God. Mary was at first shocked at what Gabriel had to say. However, she remained calm and listened to everything that the angel had to say. Then she spoke to Gabriel. But how is this possible? I'm not yet married. Do not be afraid, Mary. The Spirit of the Lord will take over you, and you will be blessed with a son. He will be called the Son of God. He will do great things for the people. He will be hailed as the King of Jews and the Savior of mankind. I am grateful for whatever the Lord has done for me. I am happy to have his wish come true through me. The Lord is with you, Mary. You are blessed. Go in peace. Gabriel then left the house of Mary and returned to heaven. In a few days, Mary became pregnant. In those days, it was very unusual for a girl to become pregnant before marriage. However, Mary explained everything to Joseph about the angel and God's wish and the son they were going to have. Joseph was a good man and he accepted everything. He married Mary in a few days. In those days, the king of the land announced a census. He wanted every citizen of his country to be counted and documented. Since Joseph was actually from Bethlehem, he had to go there to be counted. Bethlehem was a long way from Nazareth. Joseph and Mary had a long and difficult journey ahead to Bethlehem. There were no cars or other means of transportation except for a donkey. The whole journey had to be made by foot. Mary sat on a donkey and Joseph walked behind them. It was even more difficult for Mary since she was going to give birth to her baby. After many, many days of walking through the desert, Joseph and Mary finally reached Bethlehem. It was getting very dark when they reached the town. They desperately needed a place to rest and spend the night. But all the inns were full and nobody would give them space to spend the night. Joseph walked all over the town, knocking at the doors of houses and shops, one after the other, but nobody would allow them to come in. 
Mary was about to give birth, and it was important that she had a safe and comfortable place for the baby and herself. Joseph and Mary kept feeling hopeless. After searching for a while, Joseph found an empty barn built for cows. There was plenty of fresh straw there. Joseph used the straw and managed to make a bed for Mary. Later in the night, something magical happened. Mary gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. Joseph made a small bed of fresh straw in the manger and laid him there. It was warm and comfortable, and the baby slept happily in the manger. Mary was happy that the predictions of the angels had come true. Jesus Christ, the Savior of this world, was born in a humble manger. That same night, while Joseph and Mary were looking for a place to stay the night, not very far away, two shepherds were out looking for their sheep on a hill. Suddenly, they were blinded by a bright light from the sky. They opened their eyes to find a beautiful angel in front of them with long golden hair and silver wings. She wore a shimmering white and gold dress which sparkled in the moonlight. The shepherds did not know how to react and were amazed. Then the angel spoke to them. Do not be afraid. I have come to give you good news. Tonight, in the town of Bethlehem, a baby boy has been born. His name is Jesus. He will be known as the Savior of the world. You will know it is Jesus when you see a baby boy wrapped in a clothes in a manger. Go to the villages and let everybody know of this happy news. Let everybody know that Jesus, the Savior of the Jews, was born today. Go in peace now and spread the good news. The shepherds were happy and shocked at the same time. They were overjoyed at the fact that a Savior was born and they ran towards Bethlehem to find baby Jesus, the King of the Jews, who had been born in a humble manger. When they eventually found the baby in the manger in Bethlehem, they praised him and bowed down in worship. On the night that Jesus was born, three wise men were traveling on their camels across the desert. Suddenly, there felt a flash of light come down on them. They looked up at the sky and they saw a bright star. It was a kind of star that they had never seen before. The three wise men were aware of the prophecy of Jesus. They were waiting for the star of Bethlehem to appear, and when they saw it, they were overjoyed. It meant that the Savior of the world and the King of the Jews was born. At the time of Jesus' birth, the country was under the rule of King Herod, who was a very selfish and evil king. When the three wise men informed King Herod of the star they had seen in the sky and what it had meant, King Herod was worried that he would lose his kingdom to this baby boy. He told the wise men to find the baby Jesus and let him know where the baby was. Although the king informed the wise men that he wanted to find the baby so he could go and worship him, Herod was actually plotting to kill the child. He feared that Jesus would grow up to overpower him someday. The three wise men followed the star for several days and found baby Jesus in the manger. They were surprised to find the future king of Jews lying in a barn. They found the barn in which Jesus was born a few days after he was born. Finally, the star stopped right over the manger. They smiled at Mary and bowed down in reverence to the new baby. They had brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh for the baby. These were very valuable gifts and only given to kings. It was highly unusual for anybody to give these precious things to a newborn baby. However, this was no ordinary baby, and the wise men fully understood the purpose of Jesus' birth. And so, now you know the story of Christmas, and how the mighty Savior of the world started his journey on earth. The story shows us that great things can have small and humble beginnings.
Ever since Jesus was born into this world, he had been working to bring God's will on earth. Jesus lived on earth to show how God loved men. Jesus was the Son of God, and he was willing to sacrifice his own life to show this love. Over his lifetime, Jesus performed several miracles to help people who were suffering and in pain. Jesus never did this to show off or get attention. He performed these miracles so that people would believe in him and be happy in life by helping one another. This was the message that Jesus tried to pass on to us. Here are the miracles that Jesus performed. By the time Jesus was young, he was very popular among people. He was known to help people in need, and his selfless acts earned the love and respect of the people of the land. One day, Jesus and his mother, Mary, were invited to a wedding in the village of Canaan. It was a grand wedding with hundreds of guests. There was music and dancing. Everybody came to bless the newly married couple and wished them a good life. There was a grand feast for everybody. Wine was served at the wedding as this was the custom during that time. During the wedding, the host discovered that there was no more wine to serve to the guests. What is this? The wine is over? Oh my God, this is terrible. What will I do now? We have more guests coming in now. What will I give them? What happened? Why are you looking so sad? The wine, it's over. We have no more wine to give our guests. Oh my God, that's terrible. What will we do now? I don't know. What happened? Why are you crying, Anna? I don't know what to tell you, Mary. All the wine we had got over. What are we going to tell our guests now? What will we do? Don't worry, Anna. Everything will be fine. Let me talk to my son, Jesus. He can help you. You must help them. They are in distress and don't know what to do. Mother, how can we help them? We did not do anything. This is their problem. I don't care about that. You can help them, and so you must. Very well, Mother. Let me see what I can do. Mary calls Ephraim and Anna to where she was standing and talks to them. Do whatever Jesus tells you to do. Everything will be taken care of. Very well, Mary. Thank you. Take these empty jars and fill them with water, then cover them with lids. Ephraim looks surprised at first, but then continues to fill the wine jars with water. Jesus then walked to the jars and blessed them. Ephraim, now open the lids and check the jars. Ephraim opens the lid of jars and to his amazement finds the jars filled to the brim with wine. This is unbelievable. Jesus, how is this possible? This is a miracle. Thank you, my Lord. You truly are the Son of God. Go in peace, Ephraim. All the guests at the wedding were amazed at this miracle and understood that Jesus was indeed loved by God. This is the story of a woman who was healed of a painful disease by her faith in Jesus. One day, Jesus was traveling through a town with his followers. There was a woman in the town who had been suffering from a painful disease for years. She had tried to get help from many physicians from all over the country, but even after trying for so many years, the pain did not go away. It had only gotten worse. One day, the woman saw a man walking through the town with a huge crowd following behind him. The woman walked closer to get a better look and then asked a passerby who he was. Who is that? That is Jesus, the Son of God. He is traveling through this town with his disciples. Oh, is that Jesus? He must be able to help me. Heal you? That is impossible. You are an impure woman. 
Do not go near him. She thought if she could meet Jesus, he would help her. So the woman headed towards Jesus to get his blessing. But she could not make her way through the crowd. If I could at least touch his robe, I would be healed. Finally, after struggling for a long time, she managed to get near Jesus. She reached out her hand and touched Jesus' robe from behind. Immediately, she felt the pain disappear. Jesus stopped walking and turned around, looking at the crowd. Who touched me now? Master, there are so many people behind you. They are pushing forward to meet you. Somebody must have touched you accidentally. Jesus looked at the disciple and smiled at him and then turned back to the crowd. Tell me, who amongst you touched me? The sick woman came forward and knelt down at Jesus' feet, crying. My Lord, I have touched you. I have been suffering from a dreadful disease for several years. I have known nothing but pain. But now, when I touch your robe, all my pain is gone. I am free. Get up, woman. When you touched me, I felt my power go out of me for a moment. Your faith has healed you. Go in peace now. One day, Jesus was speaking to a crowd of people when suddenly a man approached him and fell at his feet. The man was Jairus. He was a very respected man of the synagogue. My Lord, my daughter is very ill. She will die at any moment. Please place your hand on her head so she will live. Jesus was moved by the request of Jairus, so he went with him. As they approached the house, one of Jesus' followers came from the house. Jairus, your daughter is dead. Please leave Jesus alone now. There is nothing he can do. Jairus was stunned to hear these words. He felt silent for a minute and then began to shout the name of his daughter loudly. Jairus, do not be afraid. Hold on to your belief. Jesus then turned to his disciples and summoned some of them. Peter, James, John, follow me into the house now. When Jesus stepped into Jairus' house, he saw everybody was crying loudly in the room. The girl lay without life on the floor on a white cloth. Stay calm, everybody. This girl is not dead. She is just sleeping. Some of the wise old men who had come to visit the house made fun of Jesus when he said this. I want everybody to step out of the house. Only the girl's parents, Peter, James, and John, may step into the room. Jesus then sat down next to the girl and stroked her head, praying silently for a minute. He then called to the girl, Wake up, child. Wake up now from your sleep. To the joy and amazement of everybody in the room, the girl got up and walked into her mother's arms. Jesus then turned around to the others in the room and addressed them. I don't want anyone here to speak to anyone else of what has happened in this room. Give this child something to eat. Joseph was one of the twelve sons of a man named Jacob in Canaan. He had ten elder brothers and one younger brother. Joseph's mother had died when she gave birth to his younger brother. Joseph and his brothers helped their father in the field. They also herded the sheep. Joseph was the favorite child of Jacob since he was young and innocent. Jacob spent a lot of time with Joseph. This made the brothers very jealous. On his 17th birthday, Jacob gifted Joseph a beautiful coat that had all the colors of the rainbow on it. Joseph was very happy, but his brothers were not. They were now even more jealous. They felt that their father did not appreciate all the hard work they were doing for him. One night, Joseph had a strange dream. He was very excited and he went to his brothers who were herding the sheep. 
Hey, Simeon, I had a very strange dream yesterday night. You should hear this. Oh, look! Daddy's little pet had a dream. Don't waste my time, boy. I have a lot of work to do. I can't sit and dream all day like you. No, listen. In my dream, we were all tying up sheaves in the field. All of a sudden, my sheaf stood upright while your sheaves bowed down to mine. Simeon looked scornfully at Joseph and then at his brothers. Oh, he isn't just stupid. He thinks even we're stupid. No, this was my dream. And listen, in another dream, the sun, the moon, and the stars were all bowing down to me. That was so beautiful. So now you want us to bow down to you, huh? Run away before we beat you with this stick. One day, Jacob sent Joseph to check on his brothers who were resting on the hillside. They were actually talking about Joseph and how irritating he was. When they saw Joseph running to them from a distance, they got so angry that they actually planned to kill him. Reuben, the eldest brother, felt strongly against this, but he knew that his brothers were too angry to listen to him. Let's kill this irritating boy and we don't have to worry about him ever again. What do you think, my brothers? Come on, Simeon. We're his brothers. We can't just kill him. We'll just throw him into this deserted well and decide what to do with him later. Hmm, that's a good idea. As Joseph came to where their brothers were resting, Simeon and Reuben held him while another brother took off his colorful coat. Then they threw him into the well. The brothers returned home, leaving Joseph all alone in the well. Reuben was sad at what happened. He planned to come around later and rescue Jacob. Just then, they saw a group of merchants were passing by. They were from Egypt and were returning after selling their merchandise. Then Levi, another brother, had an idea. Why don't we sell Joseph to these Egyptian merchants? That way we can get rid of him once and for all without killing him. That's a great idea, Levi. Let's do it. Call those merchants here. We'll also have some money on our hands. Where is Reuben? Will he agree with this? Um, he went to pick up something. Don't worry, he'll agree with us. The brothers tied Joseph's hands behind his back and sold their little brother to the merchants for 20 silver coins. When Reuben came back, he was terrified to hear what his brothers had done, but he could not say anything. The brothers then took Jacob's coat and sprinkled it with the blood of a goat. The brothers went back to Jacob and told him that Joseph had been captured by a wild animal. Jacob burst out crying, and he was deeply saddened for his favorite son's loss. Joseph was sold to a very rich Egyptian named Potiphar. He was an assistant to the Pharaoh. Joseph was very intelligent and hardworking. He was also very handsome. Potiphar was very pleased with Jacob and put him in charge of all his properties. Unfortunately, Potiphar's wife one day had an unnecessary argument with Joseph. Since she was upset with him, she told lies about Joseph to her husband. Potiphar was angry with Joseph and he sent him to jail. When in jail, Joseph overheard two prisoners talking to each other. One prisoner was a servant to the pharaoh, and the other was a baker. I had the strangest dream yesterday night. I wish I could make some sense of it. My dreams are even more weird than yours. Maybe I can help you. I can help you understand your dreams. Ha <laughs> ha! You're just a boy. How are you going to understand my dreams? I do not interpret them. My God helps me. I will try to tell you what they mean. My God surely has a message for you. So the servant described his dream to Joseph. Joseph listened to him carefully and told the servant that his dream meant he would be released from prison in three days and he would be taken back by the Pharaoh as his servant. Joseph asked the servant to remember him when meeting the Pharaoh and ask that he be released. Three days later, the servant was released just like Joseph had predicted. But when he returned to the prison, he forgot all about Joseph. And because of this, Joseph remained in prison for two long years. One night, the Pharaoh had a strange dream and could not sleep. 
The next morning, he called all his wise men, ministers, and counselors and described his dream to them. Nobody had an answer to what it could mean. When the servant, who was in jail with Joseph, heard about this, he suddenly remembered his promise. He ran to the Pharaoh and told him about the prisoner who could interpret dreams. The Pharaoh immediately summoned Joseph. So, my servant says you can interpret dreams. He tells me you are extremely gifted. I am not capable of such things, Your Majesty. My God works through me. He can give you the meaning of your dreams. Describe your dream to me. Very well. In my dream, I saw seven fat cows eating grass in a field. Then seven thin, ugly cows rose up from the river Nile and swallowed the seven fat cows. What does this mean? Joseph listened to the Pharaoh and then closed his eyes for some time. He walked across the room and came back to the Pharaoh. My Lord, this dream you just described is very symbolic. It is a message from God. God is telling you that a great famine is coming. It will last for seven years. There will be no food to grow, no rains. A lot of people will starve and die. Oh, that is terrible news. We are all doomed then. Wait, my Lord, I am not finished yet. The dream came to you as a warning from God to prepare for the famine. There will be seven years of plenty before the famine. So you can store up on food grains and livestock and other supplies during this period. You must make the most of this chance to produce excess food so that you can store it for later. Oh, you are right. Thank God I found you. This is great news. We will be prepared for the famine. We will produce plenty of food and build up storages for the difficult times. Thank you, Joseph. You are the most wise man in the kingdom. I am appointing you in charge of overseeing this work. Your Majesty, the honor is truly mine. These are not my powers. God speaks through me. I am simply conveying his message to you. Joseph helped the king to grow extra food grains and build storages during the seven years of plenty so that people would not starve during the seven-year famine. He was also very popular among the people and earned their love and respect. The seven years of plenty had passed by. The famine started. In the places around Egypt, animals were dying, lakes and rivers dried up, and people were starving to death. The people of Egypt had plenty to eat and drink because of the work done by the Pharaoh with Joseph. They had so much grain stored up that they were selling whatever was left to the people outside of Egypt who were starving. Jacob and his sons were struck by the famine as well. Their crops had all failed and their sheep had died one by one until nothing was left. They had heard of the Egyptian Pharaoh who was selling food grains to people outside of Egypt. So Jacob sent his ten sons to Egypt to get food for the family. Benjamin, the youngest son, stayed back with Jacob. When the brothers reached the palace of the Pharaoh where the food grains were being distributed, they saw a royally dressed man sitting on a high chair and supervising the distribution of the food. They approached him. It was actually Joseph. But they did not recognize him since it had been ten years since they had seen him. But Joseph recognized his brothers. He realized that they did not know it was him, and he kept quiet. His brothers greeted him and then bowed down in front of him, just like the dream he had had when he was a boy. Where have you come from? We are from a faraway land called Canaan. The famine has struck us badly. We are a family of twelve, and we have come to buy some food grains. Our father is waiting for us at home. I do not believe you. You look like spies. Are you here to bring harm to our people? No, my lord. We're not spies. We're just hungry travelers in search of food. Please give us some food grains and we will be on our way home to our father. Please help us. Okay, okay. Get up. I will sell you my grains. But you must bring your youngest brother and father when you come next time. Thank you, my lord. We will do that. The next time, Jacob and Benjamin went with the other brothers to Egypt to meet the Pharaoh. 
Joseph was overjoyed to see his father and little brother. After some time, Joseph revealed himself to them. Reuben, I am the brother you sold off to the Egyptians. Oh, my brother, it's really you. What have I done? Do not fear me. I hold no anger against you. Because of you, I was able to meet great people and be of service to these people. I was able to help feed them in the time of starvation. I have earned their love and respect, all because of you. I want all of you to come here in Egypt and live with me. Jacob could not believe that his darling son was alive after all these years. He ran to him and hugged him, while his brothers bowed down to him, just as he had dreamt many, many years ago.